Damien is going to show us how he edited this photo. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Mo from Bahrain. And if it's your first time around this channel and you'd like to learn all about car photography and Photoshop, go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. So before I start, I'd like to hear from you. What would you like to learn about car photography and Photoshop? Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. All right, so I reached out to Damien and I asked him if he would be interested in shooting a video explaining how he shot or edited this photo in um, Photoshop Lightroom. And he actually did. Now, if you're not following Damien on YouTube or Instagram, you're missing a lot. Uh, this guy has a lot of amazing content and actually got a lot of tutorials as well. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel and to his Instagram account in the description below. Don't forget to check them out and do give him a follow. All right, that's it for me, Damien. The floor is all yours. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is uh, Damian Plisko and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how I took this original M3 photo that I shot a few weeks back, uh, did some post-production work on it and ended up with this final image here. So let's get started. In the first part of this uh, tutorial we're going to start off using uh, Lightroom. Here's where I made some of the basic adjustments. Uh, to the photo before going to Photoshop and making some further adjustments to clean up the reflections and unwanted blemishes in the actual photo. Uh, so from the top down, I started just adjusting some of the basic uh, levels in here. Starting with the white balance, I chose auto. Um, and then I decided to up the exposure by half a stop. Then I went ahead and up the contrast by about 15. I took out some of most of the actually highlights in this photo here by reducing it to about 100%. Um, I brought some up, some of these shadows up, so I brought them up to about 50. Brought the whites down about 50 as well. Reduce the blacks just a little bit as well, maybe about, about 10. Then I went ahead and upped the clarity about 30. Also up the vibrance and the saturation. And then I went ahead into the saturation panel in here and I decided to reduce the oranges by about, let's say about 65, let's just say that. I wanted to bring us on the blues in the car, so I decided to up the saturation of the blues by about 15. And then I went into the hue, and I reduced, not reduced, but rather made the oranges slightly more towards the red side, so I reduced them about 20. Oops. I took the blues and I shifted them slightly to the left, more towards the cyan. And I upped the reds a little bit towards the orange side. Once I was finished with the color adjustments, I went into the detail panel and I upped the sharpening to about 70. Again, this is very subjective. Uh, this is what I chose because I felt like it worked for this photo. And then I upped the luminance to about 40. Once I was finished with the detailing, I went ahead and dehazed the photo quite a lot as well by upping it to about 40. So now that we're done making all the adjustments in Lightroom, we're going to move on to Photoshop to make the, the rest of the adjustments, removing the blemishes, the reflections in the car, and some of the unwanted objects. So now that we're in Photoshop, I'm just going to start off with uh, eliminating some of the unwanted objects in the photo itself, uh, in the background, foreground, and some on the, on the car. 
And the tools I use for this are the clone stem tool and the patch tool. Uh, it depend, depends on the scenario, but uh, I'm just gonna go through right now really quickly and speed this video up as I'm kind of eliminating some of these objects. So now that I am complete removing all the unwanted objects from the background, I'm going to move in towards the car and clean up some of the uh, blemishes and reflections in the car. And just for the sake of time, I'm obviously going to speed up the, the edit. I'm not going to go through it in real time, but I am just going to show you guys an example of uh, how I achieved some of these effects using uh, maybe one parts of, uh, of the car, maybe working on the front bumper just quickly, and then I'll speed up the rest of the process. So um, I usually use the pen tool, but for the sake of time, again, I'm just gonna use the, uh, the lasso tool in here, just to kind of select, select part of the car, and then just gonna show you guys how I achieved this. So using the same techniques for the rest of the car I, that I applied to the front bumper, I was able to eliminate a lot of the reflections and the blemishes from the rest of the car, as you can see, uh, and it looks much cleaner now. Next, what I wanted to do is emphasize the highlights and the shadows in the picture just to make it look more dramatic and have it a bit more contrast. Uh, in order to do that, I used the brush tool. I created a gray layer. I set it to an overlay mode and about 30% opacity. If I set it back to normal, you can see that it's actually just a normal solid layer. Move it back to 30% and then overlay. And then what I did is I just started uh, using the white color to brush in the, the highlights and the black color to brush in the shadows. I'll just quickly show you guys how I achieved this. So uh, with the white color selected, I started brushing in some of the highlights just to make them stand out a little bit more on the actual car. You wanna set your brush to about 25% opacity or less or else it's gonna look overblown. And then the same thing for the shadows as well. As you can see, like you can darken up the shadow here just to make it look a bit more dramatic. But I'm not gonna show you guys this entire process just because due to the sake of time, but this is essentially what I did and uh, I'll show you guys the final end result. So now that I finished brushing in all the highlights and the shadows, I can show you guys the difference between the before and after with the layer turned on and off. So this is off and this is on. And as you can see, it does make a pretty big difference. I can even show you guys the layer with just a normal mode on and 100%. So this is what it looks like brushing in the blacks, the whites, uh, but essentially you just go back to overlay. So it is a pretty effective method and it is non-destructive. Next up, I wanted to change the sky. I thought the sky was a little boring. So I decided to go on Google and just find some cool clouds. I dragged those in. Um, I put those in and I changed the blend mode to from normal to hard light. And I reduced the opacity to about 54, 50%. Uh, and then what I did is I desaturated the, uh, the entire sky so it fits with the overall picture a lot better. Next up, the layer I'm gonna show you is a artificial light layer. Essentially what this is, is a circle that I drew and then white circle, and then I applied a Gaussian blur to it. And then I changed the overlay mode to hard light. So it gives you that feeling of sort of like the sun coming from the right hand side. On top of that, I added a, uh, 
a lens flare, which I created in Photoshop as well. Uh, very simple to do. And on top of that, I also applied some light flare circles that I found on the internet as well, just to give that extra kind of cool vibe to it. So we're pretty much almost done with this photograph. Um, the only things remaining for me to do was to apply some color adjustments to this photo. One of those things uh, was apply a color balance layer to it. Uh, as you can see, I applied one and it gave it more of a uh, bluish overall tone. And then I also applied a color lookup layer, um, which uh, applied a lot to it. Uh, at about 25% just to give it different bit of a different look again This is very subjective, but this is what I chose to do So here we have the final end result I really hope you guys enjoyed this very quick walkthrough of this of the process that I took to get this photo um, I want to take this opportunity to thank Mo for having my video up on his channel. It was very nice of him to do this uh, So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care. Thank you for the awesome video, Damien. That was really informative. Now, if you have any question to Damien or to me, please leave us a comment in the comment section below and we'll get back to you on this. All right, YouTube, I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to uh, follow Damien on his YouTube channel and on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video.